I'm back again. I know, it's amazing. I don't upload very often. I'm trying to put together a schedule, but things keep getting in the way of my schedule. The original plan was to upload every Monday. That didn't work. I'm going to try for Thursday. So, that's the plan. Videos every Thursday. I'm also building a website um, where I can, will probably post videos earlier, just like slightly, maybe a couple days earlier than they are on YouTube, and I'll have general 3D news and things. I'm not really sure what I want to do with the website yet. I just know I want to do something with 3D on the website. So, it's still under construction, so I won't put a link to it yet. But let's get on to today's tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to composite the muzzle flare that we made in my last tutorial, but we're going to be compositing it in Fusion. Now why aren't we compositing it in Blender? You could. You could composite it in Blender. But, if you're going to do anything professional, or if you just want to take your work to the next level, you have to learn how to use other software. And Fusion is just a lot faster than the Blender compositor, there are a lot more tools, and it's just a lot easier to do a lot of things in Fusion than it is in the Blender compositor. I trained in Nuke, but I don't have $10,000 to spend on Nuke for my own personal use, so... I'm going to use Fusion because a free version just came out. Link in the description. And I'll put a link up on the screen to the tutorial on how we made the muzzle flare. Or you could just download a picture of a muzzle flare. That also works. Okay, so after we open up Fusion, we're going to hit Control B. This brings up our bin. This is where we will put our footage to transfer into the flow editor. Just click the clips tab, open up your footage folder and just click and drag them in there. I recommend putting your footage in image format or like an image sequence because Fusion is really picky about what codecs it'll read. Basically if it's not ProRes, high quality AVCHD or really high quality MP4 it won't read it but it will read a PNG sequence all right, now we have our footage. We're going to take them and drag them into the flow editor. Okay, now if this is your first time using Fusion, you're probably wondering, well, why can't I see anything? Well, you control what's on what screen with these little knobs. And also, just to help see it, I'm going to turn on Force source tile pictures. It'll eventually load a um, uh, thumbnail for that. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. This is still in beta. Usually it's immediate. Or you can click and drag them up there. Okay, so there's our footage, there's our muzzle flare, and this is some smoke that I just rendered out. It's really crummy and grainy, but we'll fix that in compositing in a second. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is take our footage in our muzzle flare and we need to merge them. So we're going to select our footage, hit control spacebar to bring up the search tool and add in a merge node. And this should be the foreground, the green. Yep. We plug that in to the muzzle flare and then we view the merge. And as you can see the black background is taking up everything. So to get rid of that without doing any annoying lumens keying or color keying or anything we're going to come over here to apply mode with a merge node selected and change it to screen. And then with the merge node still selected, you can rotate it, move it, etc. And this is another thing you can't do in the Blender compositor is just on the screen move things around like this, which is annoying, but whatever. We have this now, so okay. So, now our muzzle flare is in there, but we have a couple problems. My footage starts way too early. We don't need all these scene all these shots of me firing a fake gun. Also, PSA, use a fake gun. Don't use a real gun under any circumstances for a movie. It's just not a good idea. It's just really unsafe. Now I've got the PSA out of the way. Let's see, about frame... 140. Let's 
Let's start at frame 140. So we'll select this, our footage, and we'll come down here to the trim in. And we'll change the trim in to 140. So now, frame 140 is set to frame 1 on the timeline. So that's where it starts. And then we want it to end about there. That is 50 frames away. As you see, our the total length of our footage is 811 frames. We need to change that to 50, and we can just grab this and change it to 189. There we go, and now it is 50, 50 frames long. As you can see, there's still way too much time on our timeline. So we can select our footage, hold shift, left click, and drag it down here, and the timeline sets to the length of our footage. There we go. Now you may have noticed that our muzzle flare is there for the entire shot. To fix that, we need to select our muzzle flare, uncheck the loop setting, which is on by default for some strange reason. I guess for most pictures you probably want to be there forever. And we want it to last for two frames, but we're going to use the global in and the global out, which is when it starts on the timeline. We want it to last for two frames, and we want it to start at frame 16. And there we go. So, bang. Okay. Muzzle flare is now there at frame 16. We're going to select our footage again. Because our muzzle flare isn't affecting anything in the background like a real muzzle flare would, and because my scene's a little dark, I'm going to add in a bright contrast node. I'm going to come up here to the gain, just turn it up, make my footage look a little bit better. And I'm going to add in another one. Also, if you want to just look through tools, you can right click and go to add tool, and they have them all here. So, But this brightness contrast is going to start a frame before the muzzle flare, and we're going to animate it. To animate it, you just hover your cursor over gain, right click, and hit animate. Then go to this point with the muzzle flare, turn it up to where you like it, and then go to about a frame or two after it ends, and just hit this little nub. It'll set it back to one. So bang. There we go. Maybe it goes away too fast. Let's remove that key and have it end a frame later. There we go. That looks a bit nicer. And now we're going to add in another brightness contrast node because a real muzzle flare would make things closer to it brighter. And to do that, we'll need to mask. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought. <laughs> we'll need to mask around the areas that we want to be brighter. Okay, and to do that, we hit Control Space again and add in a polygon. I don't know why it's not called mask or polygon mask. It's just called polygon. It's silly, it's weird, but that's what it's called. And now we have this polygon node. I'm going to view it over here. I accidentally clicked. All right, and I'm just gonna click and drag around the points. Or not drag, just click around the place I want it to be masked. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, now that we have the guy masked out, we're gonna turn on the soft edges so that it's not just harsh. I'm going to come down to the brightness contrast and frame before animate so it starts at 1. In that frame we're going to turn it up to where we like it. About there. And then when everything's back down to normal hit the little nub. There we go. Alright. And now we just need to add in our smoke. Unfortunately, though, our smoke looks terrible. 
It just, it does. I mean, it's grainy. It just looks weird. But it's okay, we can fix that. We need to add in another merge. We're gonna take the foreground, put that in. And because this already has an alpha, it's an image sequence, we don't have to change the blending mode to screen. I'm gonna view that merge. Just hit play. All right. The first thing I'm gonna do is add in another merge node above this into that. But I want this to be the background. Oh, come on. Disconnect. There we go. I want this to be the background of this merge node. So, or this to be the foreground. So, connect the foreground there. Connect this merge up here. And connected to this, I want a background. It added another merge node. I need to add in a background node, which is just a solid color. Connect. There we go. I'm going to turn the alpha down. I did that just so that it has a frame around it so that we can warp it because as it is it's got a really harsh line there that won't look good when we put it up next to the gun. It won't look real. So I'm going to add in a grid warp. Sort of warp it. Make it less harsh. By dragging these points around. Now let's see. Let's see what it looks like. As you can see, it's got a harsh edge there. So we're going to add in a blur. And to that blur, we're going to add in a mask. Not a mask, a polygon. Poly mask. I'll drag that out to the side. And I am going to mask around there. Alright, and I'm going to turn up the blur. But not too much. And I'm going to add in another blur. And I'm going to control C, control V this polygon mask. But I don't need it to be there. I'm going to add in an invert node. I thought, okay, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong software. Maybe this doesn't have an invert node. Oh, there it is. It's in the mask. <laughs> Whoops. Go into the mask, turn on invert, and then I'm going to add another warp. Not warp, a distort. A vector distortion. So that now we have this. There we go, that's looking a lot better already. Okay, now that our smoke is fixed and looks nice, I'm going to select this merge, grab it, rotate it, and just move it into position. But it starts too early, and it's way too big. So I'm going to scale it down, move it. Still starts too early. But that's okay because we can come down here, change the global in and out. We want it to start uh, right on the last frame of that muzzle flare, so on frame 17. There we go. And it's a little too opaque. So we're going to go into our merge and this blending option here. We're going to turn it down so that it's a bit less opaque. There we go. And it, it's a little slow. It's a little slow for being shot out of a gun. So we're going to add in a time speed node. And I'm going to change the speed to 1.5. There we go. And I have a delay of 1 because it's starting too early now. And let's delay 3. It's still okay. A delay of four or five, apparently. <laughs> there we go. 
And there we go, we have our muzzle flare with our smoke. I hope you guys learned a lot about how to use fusion. This is just a short sort of intro thing to it. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Any suggestions on what I should do next, leave those down there too. And to get this out of fusion, we're gonna have to add in a render node. Oh, not render 3D, oops. Render. Is it still called a render? This is a saver now? Yep, a saver node. And then you just pick the file you want it to save to. Let's see, For just for this tutorial, I have the project files. Let's add in render. Render file, muzzle flare PNG, save. And then you'll just click this little render button. And hit start render. And after that, now it's rendering. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next Thursday.